views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of Into the Pit or the Vibes Broadcast Network. This show is intended for mature audiences. Please welcome your host, Coyote Knight. We welcome special guest, Chad Lindberg. Yo, what's up, gentlemen? <laughs> no, How doing going on, Chad? Another it's, wonderful it, day. True, It is a wonderful day. Truth be told, like, literally I lost you guys, and then, like, just at the last second, you guys appeared, and I'm back, so this is meant to be. Uh, well, I saw that your chair was oh, empty. So- I figured you said the heck with these guys. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Hello, gentlemen. Thanks for having me on. Hey, thanks for being here. Um, Chad, we want to just start off by knowing a little bit more about you, like where you're from and, you know, how, where you grew up, all that good stuff. Yeah, I grew up in Washington State, actually. Um, small town called Mount Vernon. It's about an hour north of Seattle. I grew up in Washington my whole life. And then uh, when I turned 19, I, I got brave and moved down to L.A. and became an actor and um i've been here since uh, in la since 96 and uh, very thankfully started working and as an actor um and um i've, I've been doing it a long time and um uh, and here we are <laughs> cut to now <laughs> so was uh, fast and furious the first movie you did no, actually, I, you know, the very first movie I did, I, I started acting in high school. I started doing plays and I knew very early on in my life that that's what I wanted to do, that acting was what I was good at. I was not a sports guy. You know, I, I was just terrible. <laughs> and um, but I, once I got on stage, I commanded the room. So from there, I, I went to Seattle. I, I Seattle was the closest big city. And um uh, I went and auditioned for a uh, an agency called Kid Biz at the time, and my mom took me and we auditioned. I auditioned, and um, uh, they took me immediately. And then the next day, they sent me out uh, for a movie called Born to Be Wild. And uh, if you've got kids, they'll remember it. Uh, it's a movie about a boy and a gorilla that go in, on these little adventures. And um, I uh, auditioned to play a burger boss with two lines. And I ended up booking it, my very first audition. That was my first movie. And then from there, kind of did a few things and moved to L.A. And Fast and the Furious didn't come along to the year 2000. That's when I auditioned for that. And then I would say that movie was the most significant as far as, like, that's what made me famous pretty much instantly. So they, yeah. they put you in a big movie like that and then they kill you off. That's, 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 that's my deal. That's my deal. Um, you know, whenever I book a part, you know, the first thing that people, my family or friends want to know is, do I die? And I say, yep, I die. Um, I die more than I don't. So, yes, uh, if you need someone they to die. So of these Fast and Furious movies, you can do use the paranormal angle and come back as a ghost in, like, episode Exactly. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Or however many they're going to keep making. Yeah. You know? um, but we're going to continue seeing many Fast and the Furious, I think. Spin on. I mean, it's it's cool. You know, I, we never thought that it would become what it became, number one, and yeah. then to go on to be a huge franchise, very successful franchise. Um, it's awesome. So, Rodney, come on. I know you got something. Oh, me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you're yeah, the only other Rodney I in the do. chat room. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, well, I was going to have a, do a pot reference, but uh, we'll, we'll continue <laughs> that conversation at another time. But uh, <laughs> it, it's a long story. It's an inside joke before we everybody went on air. We were all having a nice little conversation. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I want to know is you still drive like that? Like you did in the movie. <laughs> no, oh, that's I'm, actually, I'm actually a very good driver. Um, my dad was a police officer for years, so, you know, I learned oh. from my dad. So I guess, you know, I've always been a really good driver, always defensive driver, you know. Um, but then, you know, that movie came along, and obviously now I'm kind of connected to, to the car culture, whether yeah. I'm right or 
or not, you know. Um, and so you got to break some traffic laws now. You know, you would think, you would totally think. Um, I know a lot of people when they go see these movies, you know, the first thing they do is they hop into their car at the theater and the cops are just waiting right around the corner because everyone feels like peeling out. How can you not? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a good driver on, on the driveway. <laughs> on the driveway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, fuck up their mom's two-door 1996 Honda Civic with the automatic transmission. <laughs> exactly. And it's probably like a teal green. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a question for you. And yeah. I want to make sure that I ask this right because it might be a little sensitive. But, you know, being that you were an actor and then you got into uh, doing – Ghost Stalkers. Yeah. Did did you find that it was hard for people in the paranormal world to take you serious, or did it just kind of help ease you into it? Um, yeah, and first of all, nothing is off limits here. I, I'm an open book, so I love answering anything, and, and nothing is, is too sensitive for me. Um, I appreciate the question. You know, I tell people this. Um, first of all, you know, I love you know, um, the, the, the paranormal for me. It's a spirituality, and it's a passion. Um, I don't ever feel the need to go out and put anybody on because I don't feel like that's right, number one, and nor should we or we have to or we don't have to do that, you know. Um, and people, you know, I, I, would, I, I caught a lot of shit for, for a lot of reasons, um, and I get it. I'm kind of a, a divisive uh, uh, character in the paranormal. And I tell people, you know, or, or the ones that would accuse me of acting, and I say I'm a good actor, but I'm not that good. If you can't uh, feel and see the organic fear that's radiating off my body, then you just want to hate and you're not really paying attention. Well, it doesn't look like acting when we used to watch Ghost Stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> like, this dude's scared out of his pants. Oh, terrified. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, they put me in by myself overnight, and all I had was a couple cameras and a flashlight. And, um, you know, these places were, were hairy places, and... Uh, I loved it. It was a, a very uh, transform transformative uh, time in my life, and it really was a, a profound um, experience. And now, you know, this is what I do. I, I go around and, you know, take people out and, and hopefully um, show them the same kind of experience. Yeah, so you kind of got to look at it, too. If you hadn't had the acting background, you might not have had the resources or the connections to be able to do Gold Stalkers or to be able to actually have a footprint or, you know, to be able to do what you're doing paranormal. So, you know, it's, it, it built up a nest egg. It got your name out there and it gave you some money where you have more money to be able to dedicate, you know, to, toward it full time. So it's people are going to no matter what you do, or where you come from, people are going to find something negative, say it's good that you actually are dedicated to your calling and, and finding out what's out there. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, I, and it was because of my platform. I, um, I, you know, was a huge fan of Ghost Adventures and um, I watched their show religiously for years. And um, when was it? Maybe 10 years ago, whatever, eight, no, maybe seven, eight years ago, I, I reached out to Zach on Twitter and um, said I was a huge fan of their show and if they would consider having me on. And then they did. And so uh, and I became friends with those guys, and then um, they eventually had me on their show. And uh, and then from there, I just started getting invited to all these places and, and uh, meeting the best, you know, not the best, but just uh, the most well-known in the business, in the paranormal community. And um, and then Nick Groff um, got a hold of me one day out of the blue and said, I'm, I'm producing a show, and I want you to, to star in it, along with John Tenney. And, um, and the rest is history. So do you and John still keep in contact? Yeah. Yeah. John, Ten John Tenney is one of the most fascinating individuals. I don't know that he's human necessarily. <laughs> I think he's out of this world. And um, anybody that has met him will tell you the same thing. So, uh, yeah, we do keep in contact. And John, John's taught me a lot. And, and, and we really... Um, we really both sort of grew in, in that experience, and uh, I love John Tenney. And I think everybody should should meet John Tenney at oh. one point in their lives. I've actually reached out to him, but I haven't heard back from him yet. <laughs> That's true. That's true. He, he is like Sasquatch in that sense. He is hard to get hold of. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but when you do, it's magical. <laughs> 
So um, what actually got you, you know, fascinated with the paranormal? You know, I've always been fascinated with, with life in general. And I think that I think that we're the aliens in a lot of ways. I think a lot of people are walking around like this is normal. And I don't think that this is normal at all. I think, you know, millions of years ago, giant lizards flew around the sky and that was a thing. We can go back and say that was real. And imagine if we saw a dinosaur these days, we would literally shit ourselves and we'd literally go into like a shock, right? Mm -hmm. So then you fast forward millions of years to these things, these creatures called humans, and I I just think it's bizarre. I, I think everyone, a lot of people take this for granted, and I think it's bizarre. And then you add death. On top of that, that's a whole new level of, of crazy. And then, you know, you add all of the weird things that are in this earth, on this plane, ghost spirits. And, and I've had experiences since I was a kid. Um, I lived in a haunted house when I was a kid. And remember the, the pots and pans flying out of the out of the cupboards oh, um man. and and then and then for years i kind of just stuffed it away and it never was a thing and went on to become an actor never really thought about it and then until i started watching ghost adventures and then it, and, and i knew right away that i was going to go out and meet those guys and eventually go out and do this and and i did so um and they are it's 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 <clears throat> I love the balance because I get to be an actor and then I get to go out and run around in haunted basements and it's a lot of fun. But the the good thing about you is you're an, an actor that's doing the this real paranormal stuff instead of somebody in the paranormal trying to be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, and I, like I said, I feel fortunate enough to have been able to cross into that realm and and meet all the wonderful people in it, uh, like the John Tennies and the Chip Coffees and, and um, Nick Roth and all these people. So it's awesome. So did you take the red pill or the blue pill? No, good question. <laughs> good question. What, what gets me to, what get, what, what gets me into the Matrix? Which one it was it? <laughs> so what you got on your mind, Chris? I can see it in your eyes. I was actually wanting to know is uh the far as like different sites that you go to uh Chad do you prefer like uh individual like um you know sites like where you know there might have been an incident with one person cuz I kind of like um I'm intrigued by the Civil War um I'm I'm in Chattanooga Tennessee and um I just went and checked out the site of the uh, the Battle of uh <clears throat> Missionary Ridge where there's a big charge of the Union. It was basically where the first lines of the South broke for uh, Sherman to be able to launch Sherman's march. And then, you know, um, Kyle's in Texas. You're in California. There's so much of the nation's history, and there's so much energy still out there. Is there a particular, like, genre, like, uh, places that you like, kind of like going to check out, or is there, like, a, a particular site that you can remember that stands out you like to tell us about? Yeah, that's a great question. I, you know... <sighs> A lot of people, I, I don't, I don't like the word. I don't, I don't know. I would say the most intense places and the most creepiest places tend to be my biggest teachers. Um, I, I love going to places like you, like you talked about. That's a lot of history. Uh, Gettysburg was amazing, but I love the places that kind of are really offbeat and weird. Um, we shot at a place called Whispers Estate. Uh, do you guys know Whispers Estate? I can't say I know that one. I have not heard of that. Whispers Estate is an old Victorian home in Mitchell, Indiana, and we shot there. And you wouldn't you wouldn't know it if you just walked by it outside. But you go inside, and it literally kind of feels like a a boat, like you're rocking on a boat. And um, uh, I had one of my probably my most profound experiences there uh, at Whispers Estate uh, from the show. And then there's another place that I that I had sworn not to go back to. And that's called um, Old South Pittsburgh Hospital in Tennessee. Oh, I know about South Pittsburgh Hospital. Okay, yeah, I'm not going there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have heard of that one. I've been there twice. The uh, 1900s uh, mental hospitals and, and orphanages, I know they got a lot of energy. So tell me about the South Pittsburgh Hospital. Um, I, I went there twice, and in my experience going there, um, it was life-changing. I, I, I got to say, uh, the lady who owns the, the building at the time, 
um, when we had got there the first time, uh, she, before I got there, the gentleman running the event showed me a photo. And in the photo, you, it takes, it's taken a long, down a long, uh, hallway. And at the end of the hallway, you see this big, long sort of like figure standing with these long, uh, legs and torso. And then the head kind of seemed like a cow's head. And then it had these horns and it kind of looked like a, a goat. Right. Whoa. So I get to this place and I see this photo and um, the lady there tells me that there's a there's a creature here. Or I, I hate using the word demon, but something that's really heavy and negative and awful. And it would manifest itself into different different forms. Well, she said there's three ways that it does. So one was a goat. And I saw that. And then later that night. It's on my Instagram. I can even send you guys the photo if you wanted. Uh, later that night, I was in a chapel, and in the photo, you're gonna. And I posted this on my Instagram because it was way too fascinating. In the photo, you see me standing in the front of this chapel. You see a couple of, of real people <laughs> sitting there, and then in the corner, in the bottom of the um, of the window, you see this massive, massive creature um, sitting there, profoundly looking at me with its head tilted, and. And it's this huge black body that's kind of going into the wall. And then it's got these two big, stout, kind of like black legs. And then you go up and you see its torso. And it's got this like skeleton kind of like torso with faces in it. With these big, long arms and these crinkly like hands. And then you go up to its face. And it's got this, again, this kind of like this cow head with horns coming out and then this big black mane. If that's not weird enough, and it's a huge body, it takes up the whole window. We didn't see it with our own eyes, obviously. But what's creepy about that is the way that it's kind of like leaning towards me with, you know, when you're listening to somebody with his head cocked a little bit. And it was, and it, so we see this photo and, and, and everyone loses their, their shit the next day. We were there for three nights um, when we were done with the investigation, the, the ghost hunt, I swore I was never going back. Now, fast forward five more months later, my buddy calls me again. He goes, he said, we're going back. Would you like to come back and do the event? And I said, I don't know. I really have to think about it. Usually I'm like, let's do it. So I said, yes, I went back to that place. And immediately I asked the lady there, I go, I know you had told me, but what was the three ways that this thing manifests? She goes, a goat. I'm like, okay, I saw that. She goes, a bull was the second way that this thing manifests. Well, in the photo that was taken with me, this thing looks, it's got a body like a bull, like a big old, just sitting there bull. I'm like, okay, the third way that it manifests. I'm like, tell me, I got to know. She's like, a monkey. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, a monkey. So then for the night, we were there for another three nights. From the get-go, I'm saying, monkey this. I want to see the monkey. I'm pushing hard, 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 hard. I brought a good friend with me to this event. I was going so hard that it was, um, um, I, we, it gets real, right? You go out there, and, and, and it gets very real. And, and I was pushing in a way. Not, agoni- not antagonizing, but I, I was pushing for myself because I wanted to see this thing. I wanted to see that it existed. I wanted it to hurt me. I wanted it to, to touch me in a really effed up way. So then my buddy, after, after, after just pounding this thing all weekend about the monkey, the monkey, the monkey, finally, um, I was losing light at this place. I was losing a lot of light and, and things were happening. My buddy took me outside, slapped the shit out of me. I uh, said, you're going to kill yourself and you're going to kill everybody here and you're going to you're going to hurt your family. Kind of had a coming of God. This is going somewhere, I promise. <laughs> kind of had a coming of God. So so I go back into old South Pittsburgh. I, I have this uh, profound sort of um, uh, apologetic sort of uh, thing that happened with the, the hospital. Anyway. So I, I, the next day, we all go to the Cracker Barrel in the middle of Tennessee, okay? We're having lunch there with the, with the ghost uh, crew that we were with. And my buddy Ernie goes, oh, man, we got to get out. We got to go to the uh, rental car place. It's gonna, we're going to be late. It's going to close. So we, we literally pay the check, and we run outside. And the first thing that I see when I go outside is this woman standing there. And in the woman's arms is a baby monkey. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> A baby monkey, and we I literally saw this thing, and we all literally, like, just died, just about fell over. This woman walks by me, 
And this monkey looks up at me, makes a, a face, a monkey face, and literally walks inside the Cracker Barrel. And that was my lesson from the universe. That was the universe saying, oh, you want to see a monkey? Okay, well, you're not going to see the negative monkey. You are here to see a positive monkey. And that's how I took it, because when is the last time that you've ever been to a Cracker Barrel and seen a live monkey? Um, can't say that I that's, that's, that's like Tuesday down here, man. He was, <laughs> hey, that, you know, that was, more, that was a more time he was coming in. He was coming in. <laughs> so, speaking of animals, um, yeah, we have two mediums that work with us anyway. One of them, her name is Nayeli, and she she made a a, a remark in our chat room. And she said that Chad is her new spirit animal. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, and, I like that. <laughs> and she's wanting to know that with your your childhood experiences with, with ghosts, spirits, yeah. um, and now you're more into the paranormal world, does, does it bring more clarity to what you saw as a child? Yeah, you know, I um, when I was yes, – Seven, eight years old, I was diagnosed uh, with Rye syndrome, and um, Rye syndrome sort of basically, uh, you don't really come out of it, and um, it, it's it's something that um, attacks the immune system within children. I'd come down with Rye syndrome. Uh, my parents, uh, they were told that basically I'm going to die within a couple of hours, and they took me to the hospital, and um, they put me on ice for about a, a week and a half. Oh, wow. And in that time, I kind of floated. I wasn't really present on this earth. Like I kind of feel like I was floating in between this reality, and call it what you will, I call it the other side, or whatever is going on after this crazy business. Um, whether What's that? Different frequency. Exactly, exactly, exactly right. So, you know, I didn't think about it. And then I, of course, I thankfully lived and there were other children that, that, that passed at that time um, that had the same thing. So whether or not that kind of opened things up, I think it played a part. Um, everything's connected, right? I mean, from when we were babies, I think everything is connected along the way. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, it's hard to say. And everything happens for a reason. You meet the people that you meet in your life for a reason. And just the same thing with spirits. To me, you meet these certain spirits when you're out there, and it does bring some meaning to your life. So, Absolutely. As long as you're open Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. And I, I will say that, that you know, the spirits have brought me friends, have brought me, you know, um, I, I, so many people that it's just – they have a way of bringing people together, and, you know, I think they have a, a way of getting us to certain locations, because how many times have you been somewhere, and they know your name? <laughs> oh, only at Cheers. <laughs> only at Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rodney, you look like you got something on your mind. And now he's speechless. Now he's speechless. I guess we lost his audio. Oh well. No man, my, no, phone, there my yeah. phone's freezing. No, my phone was freezing up oh, there okay, for a second. Okay. Sorry, it was freezing up. Um, man, y'all were all talking deep and everything. I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I get that. I get it. I get what you're saying. And uh, yeah, and I'm I'm over here. Oh yeah, I got a question that's going in a whole another direction again. Um, okay, first off, it sucks that they killed you off Supernatural. Okay. Oh. You are you are you are seriously one of my favorite ones on there. Thank uh, you. I, the smartest one, smarter than uh, DJ Qualls character Darth. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot smarter. Um, anything weird or anything happened? I mean, because I know you guys during that season too. I mean, the season that you were on and throughout the whole you know the series. They, you know, y'all were conjuring up some <laughs> stuff. Even I did some little research on things just to get just to be curious. I'm like. Okay, somebody's had to been doing something going on there. So anything weird happened on set well, that you can recall when you were out there? Just, just, no, absolutely not, actually. you know, and, and you're not the first one to ask that question. People have wondered, oh, did things happen on set? And, and was that what got you into the paranormal? I'm like, actually, not even close. Um, 
Yeah. You know, it, it feels like one, one of the greatest sets to be a part of, number one. And those two guys, Jared and Jensen, two of the nicest guys in the world. And that set is nothing but just laughs and good times. And they work so hard. Um, but that was actually before I got my uh, my role on the paranormal. And it was just kind of a weird sort of coincidence that I happened yeah. to be on Supernatural and then go into the paranormal and then do kind of what they do and do it for real. And for real, I tell yeah. people, yeah, and I tell people, you know, as crazy as the show gets, um, these stories are, are – um, Lives in truth somewhere, you know what I'm saying, and 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 I think that's what's so cool about it. So uh, what I know you talked about this earlier, but I, th- I think somebody wants you to elaborate a little bit more sure. about about your first paranormal experience. Yeah, um, the, the first one that I can remember, we we uh, my family and I had moved into a home where the there was an older couple that lived there and the wife had passed away and the husband was forced to move to a home um and the lady that the older lady had had passed i believe at the house and things had gotten so bad that i i remember we all started to start sleeping in the in the living room and then the uh, one night uh the pots and the pans came flying out of the cupboards and um, my mom, my sister, and I went running into the into the uh, kitchen. And sure enough, the pots and pans were everywhere. And I remember my mom saying, "That's enough." And and then that that was enough, and that was it. And then we had moved shortly after that. And that's actually when I got sick with Rice syndrome. Was right after that experience. Was actually living in that house. And come to find out, my sister would wake up and see the old woman sitting and, and watching her sleep. Um, and she never talked about that for years. We never talked about it. You know, it was something that you just never, back then you really spoke about and if something happened, you kind of like, you know, but now it's so, I don't know. I, now I go looking for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as kids, if something happened to us, we didn't just run out and tell people cause you know, they'd say, Oh, you're just crazy. But you always had that, you know, cousin or, or a best friend that you could sit and you can say, Hey, this really, really creepy thing happened to me the other night. And, but now everybody wants to know about it. So everybody's more open to talking about it. Exactly. exactly. So come on, Chris. You still got that look in your eye? No, I'm I've just been missing, man. This, is, this has been a great a great conversation. It's, oh, yeah. it's um it's cool to just sit in on it and listen. I just think the whole thing um the uh, Pittsburgh uh, the South Pittsburgh uh, Mental yeah. Hospital has got me interested. Man, there's just so much so much history, and then um the story too about the uh, the monkey too, because man, and, and so many different things in life, people can be so dead set on finding an outcome, whether it be positive or negative. And you might, you might think that it's going to turn out one way, but if you're not really open to what's really going on, you're going to miss what's going on. You're going to exactly. miss the actual lesson. That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. And, you know, I love when people come out to these ghost hunts and they experience these things, but then you have some people that come out with so many devices and they come out with these boards with like all these devices on it and they're constantly looking down at their devices. And I'm like, man, your body is the best instrument there is. It's going to tell you exactly what's going on. Your mind's going to lie to you, but your body's going to tell you the truth. And when your body people, says, they've already, yep, right. they've already decided what they're going to see. Exactly. They've already got it in their head what they're going to see. So they're not open to actually seeing what's right. going on. They're like, yeah, I'm going to go and this is going to happen. And I'm going to capture this and I'm going to put it on YouTube and I'm going to get this many. <laughs> and, then, and, and then there's an entity like looking over their shoulder like, Ooh, what's that button do? <laughs> it's exactly right or they know they know too and, and things happen yeah. right when you turn off your camera you know they're like no we're not going to give you this but we'll give it to you when you turn off your camera exactly you know? yeah now i've told this story on air before but rodney and i and our our group we got invited to go to this house in seguin texas which is literally just right down the street from the magnolia hotel yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so we're there, and we had some of our equipment. Is that Magnolia, Texas? It's Seguin, Texas. The, okay. the, the hotel is called the Magnolia Hotel. But anyway, we had a REM pod, and we had it set up in this room, and it had been quiet for a long time. 
and one of the lights that we normally don't see light up, it started beeping. And it got to beeping in such a way we were all like, you know, this sounds kind of like Morse code. So I took out my phone. I found a Morse code app. And uh, you yeah. just you just type in whatever you want to say, and then it'll it'll beep the dashes and dots and dashes and dots. And so it, we were getting a response from it. Anyway, the next day, because we spent the whole weekend at this place, the next day we decided we were going to kind of look around the town because it's a you know nice little quaint town. Went into this store. I kid you not. We were looking at some little jewelry in there, and there was a. A bracelet and it said Seguin on it and underneath it it was the Seguin was spelt out in dashes and dots oh wow it's in the Morris car yeah that's and, amazing and Nayeli I told you our, our one of our mediums she kept telling us before we even got there she goes I don't know why but I keep hearing Stevie Nicks in my head and while we were looking in that store they were playing Fleetwood Mac that's amazing so well, everything's connected too. It's just like we have to pay attention. And I tell people at ghost hunts, I'm like, if you if you think about unicorn farts, say it because it's going to make us all laugh. <laughs> and we're going to head this direction, and then it's going to take us somewhere else. Everything's connected. You just never know. So it's like if we pay attention to the little things that are happening around us, it gives you that validation. Exactly. You know, and then you do have to be careful too because. We've had things attached to us. We bring them home with us, and hence why I have my darling wife and uh, our mediums. They know how to, to cleanse before we leave. But yeah, the first group I was ever with, we went to the Yorktown Hospital and yeah. and didn't have any protection. You know, didn't have my spiritual condom on or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. First time I've heard that. <laughs> Use it. But, say it. Say it on the next yeah. episode. Say it. <laughs> but, but when I got home, I was having these severe pains in my stomach and went to three different doctors. They did all these tests, couldn't find anything wrong. And anyway, somebody had brought up the fact, hey, look, look at the picture we, that we had taken in front of it. And it looked like there was a hand touching me right there. And uh, Rodney has the, and he'll he'll deny it, but he's got this ability to seem to chase things away. <laughs> the moment I talked to him about that, the pain went away it and it was gone. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's all right. I'm on my way. You know, I get. I'm gonna, I'll be over there tonight. Yeah, I'll be over there tonight. When I told him that, and uh, over the phone, I was at work, and yeah, it, that, I can't. So I, the pain went away. That's amazing. It's, Rod, Rod, it's, Rodney's I'm, like a paranormal cooler. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty cool. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so our buddy, yeah, I don't know what it is. So certain certain energies can just. Yeah, I, I'm a yeah you know, can be attracted to me, and all kinds of weird stuff could happen. But there's certain places, or certain energies. I, I get there, and everybody's claiming all this and this and this and this just going on right now. It's so hot. I walk in, nothing. Done. It's done. Even the the last investigation I was on back in July, um, our old house built in 1876. There's been deaths in this house. They've had so much stuff going on before I got there. Um, while part of the team was setting up before I even arrived, they had furniture moving. They were getting EVPs, all of this. I show up, nothing much happened. I even stayed there by myself overnight, and nothing, nothing. went on. Right. But it does it for everybody else. So maybe it's just one of those type. But it's hey, all dependent sorry. on your energy, right? It's yeah. all dependent yeah. on the person's energy, and and you can go on somewhere, that, and it's just literally nothing, and then you go on somewhere, and it's just right. Or it's exactly. Just, or it's B.O. Or it's B.O. Especially that, too. Sometimes oh, yeah. I forget, man. All right. Because uh, I'm sure it does that with uh, on y'all's when y'all go out to investigate. There's some places there. I'm sure you, you're like, holy crap, am I a ghost magnet? Or, you know, and you're going out oh, to another yeah. place. You're like, okay, well, what's going on now? You know. Yeah. I call it the leave? paranormal stink. You know, when you yeah. leave a place, and <laughs> like, it has that res- you have that residue on you. Oh, you yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and you get home and you're uh-huh. like, oh man, it's just, it's that just, was yeah, the house 
Yeah. Yes. You know how just, <laughs> some people are born just with just natural talents or disposition. Like some people are born tall, faster, strong. Just like some people are born with better memories. I think there are people who are born that are are more able to um, per- pick up on things and more perceptive. Like I think you know when people really maybe in the future are, are able to understand energy more, they're going to see that there are people who just pick up on energy and are, and are yeah. able to able to pick up on stuff. Just like LeBron, six foot eight and 260 pounds of fast twitch muscle. There may be somebody who just is able to pick up on stuff just a little bit better than other people, either, through, you know, just be, you know, by nature through genetics or just, but, you know, by being quiet or just, you know, honing a skill. But I really, I really think that, it, it's stupid to, to try to act like there's not more than, than we understand. I mean, shit, if you look at it, um, this is what, 2019, 1919, nobody even had freaking cars. There's like people who were still on horseback. <laughs> you know, the, the car was new. Very few people had running water to be able to communicate, right. you know, different states. I mean, even I graduated high school in 1991. I still remember long distance phone bills. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. what we're doing now is like if, if we've just learned this much, you know, there's 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 a shit ton more. Like you said earlier about you know the, um, thousands of years ago there were there were flying lizards. It's like if you yeah. go to the bottom of the ocean, you know, there are sharks. are like, what the fuck is this monkey in this damn wrapped in plastic going down? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do you do you know what the oldest living dinosaur is? No. <laughs> They're birds. They weren't. They once were right. lizards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, I, I yeah, it's it's one of those things that I think again because you know we're so busy now and do these phones and emails and it's just like we don't think about the fact that no dinosaurs were fucking yeah. roaming around here mm-hmm. that's bananas to me <laughs> like you know lizards that are a giant did that are literally giants i mean that that makes no sense so then these things these were these gangly creatures that are walking around thinking we know what's going on i don't think we know shit no. <laughs> those, those gangly creatures are teenagers <laughs> and there's your there's the dad joke. Right there. <laughs> but the, you know we like say we use mediums when we go on our investigations, and the reason behind that is you you get a lot of information that you otherwise might miss. And, and I mean, have you ever used mediums when you go out on your sure. ghost hunts? No, absolutely. I you know I'm. You know, I'm I'm open to everybody. I think that I think that everybody has that ability within them somewhere and are able to access it. And um, I love having um, you know mediums that come on a, an investigation and they they're able to validate you know what's happening. Yeah. Um, I love the validation. I, that's you know why we do it to get that validation. And and I love um, I love seeing when people have that experience and that it's almost like magic. You know what I mean? That kind of like. <gasps> That feeling, and mm. that's that's you know when you hear a disembodied voice, when you something happens to you, you will never forget where, you'll never forget how it felt, you know, and it changes you. I think it really does change this, uh, the, whatever we're experiencing here on this plane. I think it deepens that experience, and that's that's why I love it so much. So I know that y'all were always looking for portals and things like that. <laughs> 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 why, why are you laughing? <laughs> no, it's funny. The portals, yeah, the, the portals have chased me and, and John Tenney around for quite some time. <laughs> but yeah, and that was also, you know, kind of what they wanted us to do on the show was to go and look for portals. And um, I think it became a drinking game. In fact, uh, how many times <laughs> you know, we can say it? Um, you know, you know, I, I, you know, I think portals are all around us. You know, I, I think. Um, and of course, there are some locations that are more concentrated than others, like hospitals. Mm-hmm. We've got, we got death and we have birth happening in the same exact place. That's fascinating to me. You know, certain places kind of like are, I don't know, house these these things. I don't I don't know. Well, it's very all, bizarre. all I know is Jack and Katrina have done stole that away from me now. 
I, I don't I don't have a cable, so I'm not actually able to see these um these these shows right now. But um, uh, are they looking for portals as well? Yes, it's called Portals <laughs> to Hell. That's right. Okay, well then we have that in common. Um, I hope I, I hope they find a few. <laughs> actually, it's it's a very interesting show, and they don't they don't make it ridiculous. They you know, you can see the intensity when Jack Osborne is going to look for something. And Katrina, you can see her, um, you know, how much experience that she's had in it and kind of bringing him along. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's great to hear. Um, one of our listeners in the chat room, his name's Darren. Say, give a shout out to Darren. He's one of our. What's up, Darren? Yeah. What's up, Darren? He's What's up, Darren? One, What's up, Darren? He is one of our most loyal listeners. He, uh, he had a question that if you could come across a full bodied apparition, who would it be or who would you want it to be and why? What would you say? Uh, that's a great question, uh, uh, Darren. Thank you. Um, I, I have seen an apparition um, once or twice in my life, uh, but I'm still waiting for the one to come in and look me in the eye and have an intelligent sort of, I don't want to say conversation, but, you know, where you lock eyes, you know, where it's intelligent, um, that it's not a residual, you know, something that's playing over and over again. Um, I, I want to have that, that eye moment where you lock eyes and, um, I haven't had that yet and I know it's coming. I don't know who I, I, I feel like it's going to be a woman. Um, but you never know, you know, but I am waiting for that moment where I walk around a corner or I wake up cause I'm sleeping in these places and someone's just sitting there staring at you, giving you the look or you walk around a corner and you see someone and, it just happens, you know. I'm, I'm I'm waiting for that moment. I'm sorry, I, I'm still reading um, questions here. That's no, okay. <laughs> I, I I do have a question though. Uh, yeah. For I'm sure he'll probably going to ask this. Kyle's probably going to ask this later. Any other extra little projects coming up that you can talk about? Anything you're doing uh, right now, is, or uh, what is coming out? God, good question. Uh, let me uh, we switch gears here and think what's uh, coming out. Uh, what's going on? I guess if people want to check out um, any of my film my, uh, films, um, if uh, yeah. they go on Netflix, if they go on Netflix, uh, they can watch a movie called Security with me and, and Antonio Banderas. It's a fun action movie. Oh uh, man. Yeah, it's fun. It's and fun. Oh, no. And it's kind of like a <laughs> oh, yeah. diehard in a mall. And, um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and it's about these kind of these misfit security guards, and they have to, like, defend the mall from these terrorists. And um, Antonio Banderas, who's one of my favorite people, is oh, the star. Cool. So, yeah, if you're, if you're down for just a fun action movie, uh, people yeah, can I'll check be... out security. Yeah, or if they have... Yeah, watch um, that tonight. Yeah, it's fun. Like it's fun. It is. It's fun. And then uh, if they have uh, Amazon, uh, I'm on a show called Sneaky Pete. And um, oh, yeah. I'm in the third season of Sneaky Pete right now. And um, and that's, that's that's what's happening. And then paranormal-wise, I, uh, I go out with uh, um, uh, Lindsay Center. And uh, we go to these really – we're basically – it's called Face Your Fears. And um, – Basically, you know, ghost hunts. You know, I travel to different places and, and take people out ghost hunting. Um, so that's kind of what people can check. And I'm always on traveling, doing uh, conventions and, and ghost hunts and car shows now because of the Fast and the Furious. And, um, yeah. and I'm, I, yeah, I'm always active, always active on social media. So people can kind of just find me everywhere. I'm there. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Every once in a while, I'll catch you on there. And I was like, hey, hi. Then you'll say, oh, hi into the pit <laughs> that's me <laughs> you know when you're doing a live stream you know people get bored but you've been doing a lot of charity work lately too haven't you well i'm a huge fan of uh lost limbs foundation and i don't know if you guys are familiar with uh with um, mike couch from lost limbs um he has dedicated his time to finding um, uh, uh, legs and arms for amputees and oh. um, for kids, kids especially. Uh, it's called Lost Men's Foundation, and um, he's well known within the paranormal community actually, and has the whole paranormal community uh, rallying behind him. 
Um, so I do a lot of events uh, with them, and and um, so I would suggest uh, or encourage everyone to go check out Lost Limbs Foundation. Lost Limbs Foundation. Yeah. So uh, that's everybody cool. that's listening, uh, you you know, I tell you every time, make sure you got a pen and, and a piece of paper because we're going to have all kinds of stuff for you to write down and remember. So. That's one of them we want to jot down. We'll, we'll uh, mention it again before the show's awesome. over. Awesome. Yeah, I know you were, what, auctioning off or selling off some of those license plates with your signature oh, on yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, go, you know I, I love being able to share my things with people. And, and um, uh, a friend of mine helped me um, make a, a Jesse license plate. And it says overnight oh. parts and on it. And um, oh, they're cool good. keepsakes. Yeah, like I just, I you know, or the Jettas now, the toy cars that have come yeah. out. I'll sign those and, and um, it's fun. You know, I, I, I love, I love, I, I'm a geek at heart and I love stuff and I love like, you know, I, I collect things and, and I just think it's, um, it's fun to have that stuff. So if I can be a part of that and I can make someone feel good and, and they can get something from me that's like nostalgic and like, oh, yeah. I got a Jetta sign, man, that's just the best. I'm surprised somebody's come up to you with the license plate that says too soon. Too soon. <laughs> hey, too that's, soon, man. That's the next one. <laughs> no, I'm, still, I'm still partial to that uh that second generation of Mitsubishi Eclipse with the 4G63 in it. I'm still I'm still I'm an Eclipse fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there were some pretty ones in that movie. I got some yeah. I got some hot wheels. Yes. <laughs> Can't go wrong with those, man. Yeah. First, the first, the first movie um, was more true, I think, as far as the uh, the tuner cars, the Japanese car, and then the second one was just basically like a commercial for like a bunch of aftermarket stuff and like cars that nobody wants anymore. Because the, the second generation that Eclipse and the, and the one with Tyrese in it, then it was like. Somehow they snuck a little bow wow into the movie, which they're still, they're still trying to act like they didn't do that to us. So we're not going to act like they didn't try to spring a little bow wow racing. It's like, little bow wow can't even cross the street by himself. He's so <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, number two, number two. Y'all be pissed. Like, first off, y'all stuck me with a Volkswagen Jetta, and y'all gonna kill me off in fifteen minutes and bring the Bow Wow's podcast back. I know, I know. It was, um, yeah, the Jetta was actually, um, I think, one of the slower cars out of all of them. Um, oh my god, yeah, it's like I was a grocery yeah, dealer for real. Yeah. Like, he got That's freaking so Supers and Honda S two thousand, and was like. And my neighbor got a Jetta, man. We stole we stole the radio on a couple Jettas. <laughs> exactly. But they've come a long way. So um yeah. I'm sorry about them down. We're gonna get you we're gonna get something faster and uh fast and furious okay. to paranormal drift. Paranormal <laughs> drift. Exactly. <laughs> you never know. So has there ever been that one person in the paranormal field that you've wanted to go on a, a hunt with and you haven't got to do it yet? Oh, uh, great question. Um, you know what? I feel like that bucket list has been yeah, pretty good. Thank God. I, I've been really lucky to have met, I think, just almost everybody in, in the industry. And I've learned so much from all of them. Um, you know, I, I just... I love being able to call them my friends, you know, and, and um, one of my favorite things to do is to go to these uh, events and see all of these crazy individuals and the, the conversations that we'll have, just matter of fact, you know, about mm. demons and this and that. I love it. It's just so, like, nonchalant and matter of fact. And um, But I, I just, again, I'm, I, I feel incredibly uh, humbled and grateful to be in that in that world and be able to call them friends and be able to call upon them if i have a problem and um and vice versa so it's pretty cool i know one of my favorite conversations i ever had was with dustin parry uh one of my favorite people and um yeah used to when i watch ghost hunters i like this dork they got on here but you know i when I met him in person and I found out what kind of guy he really was, we just, me and the wife fell in love with him right away. And we didn't talk about the paranormal. We talked about, you know, how he works with people who are going through depression and, 
And, um, you know, I, that's the kind of people that I like to get to know. And it's like, yes, I love talking about the paranormal, but there's more to this person's life than just yeah. that. Yeah. And you couldn't be more right about Dustin Perry. He's one of the nicest individuals and most caring, most loving people. And, um, I, yeah, he's, he's a special dude. Yeah, he is. So lots of love here today. Lots of love. Lots of love. Lots of love. Lots of love. Yeah. So everybody, get ready with your pen and your paper. Tell everybody yeah. how they can get a hold of you on uh, social media. Sure. I would say the best way to get a hold of me would to go to my Twitter and go to my Instagram, and that's just both going to be at Chad Lindbergh. And I'm pretty active on, on Twitter and Instagram, so if you send me a message, especially on Twitter, if you're like, hey, I caught the show today, then that's – you know, I'm more likely to be like, thanks. You know, um, <laughs> uh, Twitter. Yeah, I'm always uh, I'm a Twitter uh, Jedi. Um, and then, of course, uh, everybody go check out Lost Limbs Foundation, which is a great charity. And, and say hi to Mike Couch. Tell him I sent you. Tell him we sent you. There you go. Sake. Tell him we sent you. Well, I, I think I uh, I was probably bugging the hell out of Lindsay, the lady that was your assistant or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, my manager, my manager. Your manager. Yeah. She's like, it's, yeah. it's that Kyle dude again. Will you hurry up and answer him? <laughs> yeah. No, it's all good. And I, you know, and thank you, gentlemen. I, I love these conversations that are casual and four guys talking. And um, that's to me is the best. It's not an interview. It's a, it's a convo. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the way we oh, like, yeah. well, that's the way we like it. You know, there's, yeah. Don't have to be so formal. I tried that before when I first got into podcasting, trying to have these questions written out. And, um, you know, what about this? What about this? And it's so robotic. And it, But when you just sit and you have a conversation and you just kind of forget that you're even on the air, it, it gets to be fun. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Thank you guys for having me on. Oh, man. Thank you. Welcome to you, man. Yeah. Thank, thank you for yeah, your time. Thank, yeah, thank you, everybody, for listening. I, I know you've got people in, in your room there, and I just it means a lot to people. You know, I, I tell people all the time, you showed up, and that is, like, what we need to do in life. And, and when people show up, your time is most valuable. So the fact that people came to hang out with us, that's, like, the best. So thank you. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. You know? <clears throat> And yeah, you get some of these people, some of our listeners say it can get a lot of hand, you know, sometimes. But that's, uh, I think that's probably why. <laughs> if you read some of, if, you, if Kyle would read some of the questions and comments <laughs> that our listeners make oh. while we're talking. And sometimes it's not even about what we're even talking about and doesn't even re- refer to us. And they're just like, they have their, sometimes they're even their own little conversation. So, you know, both each other. I'm like, okay. All right, fine. Be that way. So, <laughs> I, I try. Listening in. I, I really try to pay attention. <laughs> Sometimes, like a couple of weeks ago, it got raunchy, and I just quit even reading them. <laughs> but uh, our other medium is on, and he, um, his name is Maximilian, and he has a question on what is your belief in other beings like aliens. Uh, what's up, Max? What's going on, man? And I'm 110% all about aliens. I think they have been assisting us for years, and not even years, I mean, just like forever. I think they're here now. I think they're watching us. I think, um, I, 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 how can we not be alone? And again, it goes back to we're these gangly creatures. I feel like we're the aliens in a lot of ways. And then you add that on top of it. It's mind blowing. So I'm all about it. I, I'm into, you know, aliens. I'm into the fairies. I'm into the to the trolls. I mean, I mean, Bigfoot, all of it, all of it. I'm on board. I'm on board. <laughs> um, speaking of uh, fairies, I've got a couple of videos that I'd like to, to send to you. Oh, wow. Yes, please. Because they seem to be attracted to me for some reason. Maybe it's the dress. I don't know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, yeah, you couldn't have stranger aliens than me and Rodney and Chris talking with you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, hey, and, and if you ever decide to, just let me know. Also, um, I'm sure I can hook you up if you ever want to go visit Roswell. Um, uh, I have a hookup out there. so That would be yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, Oh yeah. Speaking so. of which, like if you look at the technology as of you know, 
us on the cell phone. Look at the technology before 1947 and after. Uh huh. Oh yeah. 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 Big boom in technology. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And every ten yeah. years, it's just like, wow! How yeah. did they come up with that? I don't know, and that's one thing I think about often. I'm like, where, how can we get any better than this? Oh, it will. I don't know where it's going, but how does it get any crazy? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm talking to a thing called a phone, talking yeah, to right. three of you. It's uh-huh. you know, now, I mean, this yeah. is stuff that we used to dream about when we watched Star Trek as a kid, you know? Yeah. You guys have to... better equipment than Starfleet. Yeah, <laughs> actually, they had to have like cords on their shit. <laughs> our, our communicators are better. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, I'm I'm gonna announce a few things before we get done here. And Chad, please uh, stick around after the show for just a few minutes. We'd just like yeah, to chat yeah, yeah, with yeah. you if you don't mind. Um, number one, every week we always mention joining the Paranormal Bully Busters, and that's by getting involved by visiting stompoutbullying.org, or you can call 877-NO-BULLY, that's 877-662-8559. Um, visit their website, buy their merchandise, because all the proceeds go to uh, expanding their reach and also the resources it also allows them to keep the 24-hour hotlines open. Thank you for joining us on Into the Pit. Please follow us on Facebook at the Vibes Broadcast Network and Instagram at the Vibes Broadcast.